In this video, we're going to discuss the factors that favor SN2 reaction, and we're also going to go through all the steps involved in SN2 mechanism. SN2 stands for bimolecular nucleophilic substitution. There are two components that are involved in a nucleophilic substitution reaction. One of them is the substrate that has an alkyl group attached to a leaving group, RLG. Another one is the nucleophile. SN2 is bimolecular because the rate of the reaction depends on both the concentration of the substrate and the concentration of the nucleophile. That makes SN2 a second order reaction. Now let's look at the factors that will favor SN2 reaction. The reaction rate of SN2 is fastest for small alkyl halide. That means metal substrate is the most preferred, followed by primary and secondary substrate. The reaction doesn't proceed at all with a tertiary substrate, so keep that in mind. As for the nucleophile, the strong ones are going to favor SN2. They are generally an ion like hydroxide ion, alkoxide, and cyanide ion. As for the solvent, polar A protic solvent like acetone, acetonitrile, or DMF are preferred. They are polar enough to dissolve the substrate and nucleophile, but will not hydrogen bond with the nucleophile. Nucleophilic substitution reactions prefer low temperature in general. This is because if we use heat, then elimination reaction is going to dominate over nucleophilic substitution. So that won't be favorable for SN2. So remember to keep the temperature low. And for the stereochemistry of SN2, we know that it happens through a backside attack. If the carbon connected to the leaving group is chiral, then the SN2 reaction is going to give us an inversion of the stereochemistry. We're going to look at the mechanism to explain this inversion. Let's use S2-bromobutane as our substrate. And we're going to use hydroxide ion as our nucleophile. So in an SN2 reaction, the nucleophile will approach the alkyl halide from the back. That means it's going to be 180 degrees from the leaving group. This is a very important point to keep in mind for SN2 mechanism. The nucleophile attacks the carbon that is connected to the leaving group at the same time the leaving group will leave. And this attack happens in one step. We can see the partial bond between oxygen and carbon forming and a partial bond between carbon and bromine breaking. This is called the transition state, shown in a bracket and a double dagger on the top. The product that we get in this example is r 2 butanol As you can see, the stereochemistry is completely inverted. We started with S2-bromobutane and then we ended with R2-butanol. Our s stereocenter got inverted to R and that's what it meant by inversion. This is the signature of SN2 mechanism. Another point to note for SN2 mechanism is we want to keep the nucleophile as small as possible and we want to keep our substrate as less hindered as possible. These two conditions combined is going to give an optimal SN2 reaction. To sum up the SN2 mechanism, the nucleophile attacks from behind the substrate at 180 degrees from the leaving group. The less bulky the nucleophile and the substrate, the faster the reaction will take place. The product that is formed in SN2 will be completely inverted. With that, we're done discussing the SN2 reaction. I have other videos on SN1, E1, and E2 reaction. Do look for them in the description box below. Here's a video that I've handpicked for you. Do check out our app that's available in both Google Play and App Store. Thanks for watching all the way till the end. If you find this video helpful, be sure to like and share it with someone. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you won't miss future videos. Your support means a lot to me.